Guys, um, I just want to just say thank you for this award for receiving the, the bench best in 2020. There's a lot of people I'd like to thank, you know, my barbell, my plates. I couldn't have done this without you guys, uh, you know, so uh, yeah, thank you. Joe, Joe, this is supposed to be a video on how to correct your bench. My bad, guys. Uh, Coach Joe here at the Lions Den, located in Colmar, PA. In this video, we're going to be covering some common tips to improve and increase your bench press, uh, specifically when you're going for one rep maxes. I a lot of my athletes here train uh, and test their one rep max. So based off some of the things I saw with them, I figured it could help you guys out. We're going to keep this video very short, sweet, to the point. Get your pen, papers, barbells, plates, all the good stuff ready because we are going to be diving in. And of course, subscribe to the dang channel. If not, I'm gonna cut your arm off. Then you can't bench press at all. All right guys, so tip one when it comes to the bench press and one of the errors that I had seen was honestly the placement of the bench in relation to the bar. And what happens is if we screw this up, we end up hitting the J cups, which is kind of a beginner mistake. But to be very honest with you, this randomly sometimes happens to me too. And it's a little bit frustrating, but if you're going for a one rep max and you have all that weight on the way up, you hit the J cup, Man, does that throw off one, your bar path, but then two, uh, your confidence in the lift. And it's just something that we totally want to get out of the picture when we're um, hitting a max rep. And this is something that I saw happen to a couple of our athletes. So we just want to avoid this completely. So I'm just going to show you why this happens. Uh, typically the bench is going to be too far back uh, past the barbell. So when I lay down and I go to take it off, right, I'm really not clearing the J cups too much. And especially if we're pressing back towards our face. So when I come down and I press back, there's a lot of potential for me to hit this J cup on the way up and kind of get stuck here. All right. So just a quick fix that we can do is we want to make sure that we slide that bench uh, past the bar. Okay. So the bar is going to be in front of the bench and hopefully you guys are using spotters when you're going for one rep maxes. I really, I would encourage you guys to do that. So, what we do is we roll the bar down to the J cup and we would have our spotter help us on a three count, right? One, two, three, they lift it up and off. And now I have a ton of room, okay? So I can really come all the way down. I can press slightly back and I'm in no shape to hit that J cup now, okay? So make sure guys, when you're going for these one rep maxes that your setup is going to be, you know, as crisp as possible. And this is just a really, uh, easy thing to avoid when going for a one rep max. All right guys, second tip. This is probably one of the biggest ones that I see with uh, beginner uh, benchers and I saw a lot with athletes here when they were testing. And that's just keeping tension throughout all points of contact uh, with our body to the bench and to the floor. So what I mean by that is when we go to bench, right, and we're all set and we're nice and tight, we have to remember that we want to build up tension in our body, okay? Especially if you have an arch, right? The arch is going to build up tension from your upper back, you know, throughout your torso, down into your feet. And we really have to act like our feet are rooted in the ground. So I'm sure you've maybe seen somebody uh, do this, where they go to bench, right? And as they come down and on the way up, they kick their foot out. Or maybe you see their feet are moving around just like so. We really want to avoid any movement from the feet. So what we want to do is really squeeze our butt and push our feet down into the ground with all points of contact uh, from the foot to start. Some people like to dig their toes in. Okay, that's totally personal preference. I prefer just having my whole foot on the ground and keeping my heels closer to my butt so I can really use and feel my quads pushing into the ground. So as we come down, okay, we're keeping those feet planted into the ground as best as possible. So we don't want to lose any tension by having our feet move or losing one support leg as we're doing our bench. The other thing you can see as we bring the camera around is that my head is gonna stay rooted to the bench. I made a whole video on this before uh, about Mark Bell and when he would raise his head all the time, which I'll link above. But as we come down, okay, we wanna really keep our upper back and our head glued to this bench, pressing straight up. So what I don't wanna see is as we come down, we're looking up like this. There really is no point or benefit of losing that contact to the bench. So we want to make sure that we keep it tucked down and we drive straight back up like so. So guys, just to reiterate those points, 
want to make sure that we're building tension throughout our body and keeping all points of contact secured to either the bench or the floor or even our barbell, keeping a nice tight grip. When we lose that, okay, it just breaks a chain or a link in the chain and we lose a lot of uh, that energy that could be transferred over to hitting that PR or that one rep max. So another common mistake, and this is something that I'll talk about some of the other lifts, is losing control on the eccentric portion of the bench press or the lift in general. So when we're in our setup, okay, we build up all that tension, we get nice and tight, right? The bar is, is up top. The eccentric is anytime we're lowering the bar, okay, towards um, the floor. So what happens is, is instead of controlling it on the way down and building that tension, right, and then exploding up, what I see people do is they start coming down and then they just lose the tension and the bar basically crashes down on their chest, which is what we don't want at all, all right? So we wanna make sure that we're controlling the eccentric down, really loading those muscles up, and then exploding straight back up, okay? This also helps us keep a nice tight bar path because we get out of control, right, and say that bar shifts forward or backwards, uh, we're just gonna be in a whole other problem, which I'll talk about uh, in the next step. But control that eccentric, don't let the bar crash hard on your chest, and then explode up through the concentric portion. All right, guys, to follow up from our last point when I was talking about controlling the eccentric portion, this is gonna piggyback off of that. And really what we wanna do is make sure that we're having crisp bar path. And this is something that I saw a lot of that happened to the athletes because they just maybe lack confidence in themselves or they crashed on the eccentric, so then it threw off that bar path. But basically what we wanna avoid is as we're benching, right, we're bringing that bar down. And what I was seeing is when they press on the way up, they press back slightly towards their face. Okay, once this happens, our bar path is kind of destroyed here, and it's putting all this weight into really weak muscles compared to all the big muscles we can be using if it was a little bit lower. So, what we don't want is we don't want to press back. This kind of turns into like a JM press or almost like a skull crusher, where we're really limited by using our wrists and our triceps for pretty much the rest of the movement. So, when we come down, all right, we want to make sure that we're keeping the same line on the way up as we did down, just like so, okay? So in a nutshell, we want to avoid pushing back towards our face and getting close to this position. It's gonna be a very weak position. So as you come down, have confidence in yourself to push straight up on the way that you came down. So come down, trace right back up. All right, last tip. This is kind of across the board for all the lifts, and that has to do with breathing. We do not want to breathe through the movement, okay? Maybe the last 5% of the lift, when you're very confident that you're gonna lock it out, you can exhale slightly, but for the most part, we never wanna be releasing air as we're doing our lift. Okay, we're trying to build up all that tension and pressure, taking that big belly breath, keeping everything nice and tight. Once we breathe, that kind of deflates ourselves. So think about that water bottle analogy I always use. When we put you know, uh, all that water in that water bottle, we squeeze it, it's nice and strong. If we twist the cap off a little bit and then squeeze it, everything comes out. Basically, that's gonna be your body if we're under pressure and we release that air. So, only time you should be breathing in the bench press is gonna be before or after the rep. I know some guys actually do most of their sets if they're in a little bit of the lower rep range without breathing at all because they're staying super tight. So, you can probably potentially do the same thing if you have those lower reps, and obviously we don't want you to black out or anything like that, uh, but that would be what I would suggest to you guys and a lot of my athletes. So. What we don't want to do, I'm going to show you right now, which is probably the typical bro benching that we all saw at some point, but we're right here. Okay, we're coming down. Don't want to do that. So get your air up top. Breathe up top, okay? But here I'll do a couple without breathing at all, so get my air. then I would get my air again once I'm up there. So those are pretty much the tips for the bench press, the kind of the five that I think a lot can help a lot of beginners. And honestly for myself and other more advanced athletes, it's just good to constantly be going over these things. And you never know when something little like this can pop up in your training. So it's just good to correct it, but you're in luck. We actually have a bench program that I just released on zashrank.net. I'm out of breath, so I should probably put a cardio program out too. But it's all about building your bench and going over everything that we had just talked about 
We have tons of diagrams going over common mistakes, hand placement, all sorts of goodies. So if you guys are interested in increasing your bench press and you want a bench specific program, check out zastrength.net, totally kick ass. Uh, if you guys also aren't a member, we have our Facebook group, The Iron Lions. Just type it in the search thing on uh, Facebook. Free group, just a cool lifting community where we talk all things strength, conditioning, strongman. We give tons of video form checks. It's just a really cool community for like-minded individuals such as yourself. But keeping this video short, sweet, simple, to the point, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you like, subscribe, tell the tortoise at the end of the swamp that he needs to be getting jacked because you never know what's gonna happen when the water rises. Peace. All right, thank you, thank you, Kilda, what do you think? Um, I think you forgot something. Okay. Lean mean. Oh my gosh, of course, guys, guys. As always, stay a lean mean strike machine. Peace.